All right, how's everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for tuning in to the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? What I want to talk about today is uh, what I want to call, are you in a trance and not even know it? So <laughs> it's it's something I'm kind of, I, I've been really thinking about for many, many years. And being uh, in such different opposite environments I think I was able to realize um, how different people acted in different situation or different situations, obviously, but it, a lot of it had to do with their parents' programming. I'm not going to jump into all this programming shit. I know I talk about it a lot of times, but that's not really what this is going to be about. And when I say a trance, it doesn't mean you're walking around like you're you're numb to everything else. Or you don't know what's going on. You're like some zombie. That's not what I'm talking about. And I'm not sitting here going to start digging on people that are religion or political or any of that type of stuff. Because I, I don't have anything against anybody for their religious beliefs or you know political beliefs. As long as you're not trying to hurt others or hurt one another uh, or hurt yourself for that matter. But what I want to talk about regarding a trance kind of is. So I'm just going to go back to when I was younger and I had two parents that couldn't have lived opposite lifestyles, which was really interesting. And if you've ever listened to my podcast, hopefully you know a little bit about that. My past that I grew up kind of bouncing between a father that owned a nightclub and a mother that was really involved with religion. And when I say both were extreme, they were very extreme. And that's not a dig on my mom or dad because I actually quite enjoyed both. And I think when I talk to people, I can understand if you're really religious, right? I get it. And then somebody who's really loves the party. And I sometimes wonder, like there's a fine line there. It's kind of like love and hate sometimes. As you know, you like love somebody and then all of a sudden maybe it doesn't work out and there's a fine line where you hate that person or you resent them or whatever the case may be. It, I see that kind of with people that are very religious and then anti-religious and I'm or not even anti-religious just people that don't always talk about religion and what I wanted to get into today is I, ju I just want to kind of an honest approach at this because I've talked to my mother before regarding this and she actually gets kind of upset because of the environment that my father was raising me in to a certain degree and her never knowing about it. And of course, I'm not going to tell my mother about that because I quite enjoyed it. But by no means was my father ever actually out to hurt me. I think he was just trying to teach me about the real world and how the real world really was. It wasn't some phony bullshit where you're like growing up and you think, you know, I've seen this with a lot of family members and friends' households where, and it was wonderful. I don't want to sit here and dig and don't, think any of my friends or anything or regarding their growing up in certain environments where it kind of was always just very simple. You go to school, you come home, you have dinner at five o'clock, uh, you do your homework, uh, you may watch a movie, play a video game, whatever the case may be, play with your friends in the backyard or if you had sports and call it a day. My life had that aspect of it with my mother and then eventually my stepfather, but then on my father's side was quite the opposite. It was more or less, um, I had to do homework but I had a cousin that lived near my father's club, so I would spend the nights there a lot of times until I got older. Um, but it was very controlled environment. I was there usually in the afternoons and not all the time. Maybe weekends I'd stay later, but my cousin's um, husband was in a band, so he was a really good drummer. My dad played the drums, so sometimes even the bands would play at my father's club. So I got to hang out there quite often. And then once I hit my later teens, I was at my father's club pretty often. And what I realized, so when, when I was at my father's club and a lot of people were getting smashed, obviously, even doing drugs. And I seen people doing, uh, you know, smoking weed in and out of the club, uh, doing coke in and out of the club in their cars. Uh, you see people doing, uh, shooting up all these different things. And I saw that actually with my mother doesn't even know that, but my family members, some of them, um, that married into our family, not our family members, uh, I seen them actually do that as well, uh, like with a door creaked open and it, it wasn't like they were exposing that. They didn't, or you walk in on a door. There was drugs in the 70s and it was pretty, it was pretty there. It was right in front of your face, especially if you grew up uh, with older cousins, uh, older friends, older uncles, 
aunts and they had friends that partied. So not necessarily they would be the ones doing it, but their friends would, right? It was just the way things are. And then a lot of my family members too were in bands. So they liked the party, obviously, regardless who it was. I'm not going to start naming names. And I, I, I dug that about them. And a lot of my family members knew with my background being around my father, I think they felt very comfortable that even though I was younger, that I was cool. I'm not going to beef them out. But back to the trance. <clears throat> so I seen people obviously on drugs and it seemed like they were on a trance or in a trance, on a trance, Jesus, sorry about that. They were in a trance. Even if they weren't on drugs, they were drinking. And that's kind of, you know, being drunk or even drinking, I've been taught, I did a podcast, like what's the end game? Because <clears throat> I think a lot of people when they're drinking, they either drink to get buzzed, they get they drink to get smashed, right? Uh, if they're driving that day, they may be like, okay, I'm just drinking to catch a buzz enough, but not enough to get a DUI. If they're home drinking wine, they may be like, okay, I'm going to finish a half a bottle or I can only do a bottle because I got to get up for work. When you're partying with your friends, maybe you're like, all right, I'll do X amount of shots and do this or that. And the point being is I think they want to put themselves to a certain degree into a certain type of trance. And I don't know if it's a numbing effect. Everyone has their own reasons for drinking. And again, I'm not, just so you know, I'm not against anybody drinking. I'm not against anybody getting smashed, catching a buzz. That's your own business. But I do think to a certain degree, getting drunk is a form of being in a trance. Uh, you you don't feel normally like how you feel. You don't have the same control. That goes for drugs as well. You wouldn't be doing that. Um, a lot of people do that to escape. So let me flip to my mother's side. So when my mother was very religious, <clears throat> and I was even going to religious camps. Uh, actually, I'm going to not even get into the religious camps yet. I'm going to kind of use that later. But let's take my mother would be doing a lot of Bible studies at her house. We'd go to other Bible studies. And there was a lot of people that were very, very religious. And what I found quite interesting was a lot of these people that found the Lord or followed Jesus or whatever, a lot of them had issues in their past that they would talk about. And I'm not saying they were like it's an alcohol anonymous thing, but a lot of them needed or felt like they needed Jesus or they needed the Lord or they needed religion to kind of not fall back into drugs, alcohol, or they didn't have anything to do with that. They just were programmed or they grew up in a religious household that could be Catholic, Lutheran, uh, Baptist, I don't care what it is, Mormon, um, whatever the case may be, their parents kind of, you know, you flowed from your parents or your grandparents' religion, and then you kind of were expected to follow that religion, which I think a lot of us do. I don't think a ton of people necessarily break out of the religion that they were raised to and flip. Now, I think a lot of Catholics, I would say, go Christian, right? But it's not like a lot of Catholics are Muslim. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Or a lot of Catholics go Hindu or whatever the case may be. Is that right, Hindu? Or all of a sudden, a lot of Catholics jump into a Mormon situation. I'm not saying they don't. Well, tons, I'm sure, do. But you kind of, if you're Catholic, you kind of floated into Lutheran if you changed. You may have just went to Christian or whatever. At least that's what I saw. So I don't want to argue with people over that. That was just the environment I was in. Now, a lot of these people, though, I realized they were kind of high on religion. And again, whatever they were feeling or getting out of that was almost like being in a trance, I think. Especially when I started to go to these functions with my mother. And again, she meant the best for me where I was going to those places like Benny Hinn, where people would be literally in gymnasiums and they would put their hands on people and they would fall over and they would catch you. I even went to do that and some guy went to put his hands on my head and then he kind of pushed me and someone caught me. I was laying on the gym floor and I literally was like, what the F is going on here? Did he just push me? And I felt absolutely nothing. And I don't know if that was me fighting it. I just think a lot of them or a lot of that was because they believed so hard and I can see that they wanted to get that emotional reaction out of someone touching them or being in that trance again or that emotional state where, again, you have drug addicts, alcoholics wanting to feel a certain way and then with religion or certain things, them wanting to feel that way. Again, not bad on either ends. But even though they're so different, 
they both kind of longed for that. So I, I, I can even see when I was in my late teens, early 20s, when I was partying a lot, I just thought you had to hit nightclubs. I didn't know any better. Like when I moved to Florida at 18 years old and I already had a fake ID at 16 and I was going to clubs my whole life, I didn't even know that like, like I just had a nightclub lifestyle from two years old on. I didn't miss a beat ever. Even going to places with my father, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I talk about going to the Playboy Club with my father, all that. So I never... I looked at alcohol um, as a business, but I also was like, I was hitting clubs. I'd go by myself. When I moved to Florida, I would, <clears throat> excuse me, I would literally go to nightclubs, 18, 19, 20. I didn't know a lot of guys. I knew some guys from my gym. I'd meet up with them. Even if I didn't, I would just go out. And that's all I really knew. And I was thinking myself, and I really wasn't a big drinker. I had nothing to do with drugs, but I just, that was just who I was, was I kind of, I think I was in a trance to say, if I don't go to nightclubs, I'm not cool. I'm not hip. This is where the hottest women are, um, including bars, gentlemen's clubs, all these things. It was just in my DNA. And I remember when I was getting engaged, I was so happy that I was putting that behind me because I felt like almost a veteran. Like, it sounds like, uh, like I, I did 20 years in the nightclub business. I remember someone turning, when I was turning 21 years old and someone said, hey, Rich, what's it feel like to be 21? You know, I said, I've been 21 my whole life. And I really felt like that. But the trance situation really kind of came to uh, like a head when I started to go um, to religious camps my mother sent me to. Very nice people. You know, a lot of people, I think sometimes when you're looking at the outside and you're, 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 you know, you have a family that's not that religious or atheist or whatever the case may be and people sending their kids. Cause I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to, a, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, a camp it's in Wisconsin. It's a couple of weeks and you learn about scriptures and you get to do some other things, but it's really religious based. You know, it's, it's really a lot of like learning, you know, memorizing and doing all these things, learning about the Lord, all different people preaching and, I don't know if they're programming you to be a preacher. The first time I went, I was very nervous. I I very seldom ever throw up. I remember throwing up. I was so scared to go to this thing because I didn't know if I was, you know, you're kind of confused too when you're younger. My mother never knew that with religion because you're walking around a lot of times. It's not her fault with a lot of guilt a lot of times where they're preaching to you. If you do this, you're wrong. You do this, you can't swear. You can't have sex before you're married. You can't do this. You can't do that. It's all can't, can't. If you do that, you, you know, it's, it was a lot of that. And then you're going to a camp. It was almost anxiety to say, oh my God, am I going to be around a bunch of people that are very holy, that are, I'm not worthy, whatever. But then the second time you go, you know, you're like, okay, these kids are just like me and whatever. But it really was not my thing. For one, it was outdoors. Number two, it was in Wisconsin. I'm not a Wisconsin guy, but it was really like going to a camp camp. You're staying in these, whatever, uh, these cabins. The kids were, you know what I got to say though? I look back, all those Christian kids and all them, great kids. My counselors, great guys. I, I, I really felt way more comfortable around them than I'd say most people. They really, I think, not even from a religious perspective, they really cared about me and they really, really cared about a lot of kids. I never had a bad incident and I would watch movies like Meatballs and these other movies about these crazy camps doing all this crazy stuff. And we had fun there, uh, but it wasn't crazy by any means. But now fast forward a little bit, I was exhausted from the religious camp. So I wanted to either do a religi- oh, religious, a wrestling camp because I loved wrestling or tennis. And I kept seeing in Tennis Magazine, uh, Nick volunteered at his beautiful tennis camp, and I love playing all different sports. And for some reason, my mother didn't want me to go to wrestling camp, um, and she approved the tennis camp. So my dad paid, and I'm not sure if he paid $500 a week or 1000 It was a lot of money in Bradenton, Florida. I would just drove past there actually last week, and I came. I spent summers with my dad, and this one summer, I was 15, he drove me up to the number one tennis academy in the world. And, uh, that's where Agassi, Courier, uh, Serena, Venus, they've even been there. All the, a lot of top tennis players, especially in the eighties and nineties went there and I was there in its heyday and I was nowhere near at the level that those kids were, but I was pretty decent. And they ask you if you want to live there and everything, but to make a long story short, I went there. Most beautiful young girls I've ever seen in the best shape. Uh, the wealthiest people I've obviously ever been around. There were kids from Canada, China, Japan, Texas, 
Uh, I was from Chicago, uh, South Florida, California, San Diego, San Fran. It was unbelievable. All these kids. It was great kids. And I learned so much about focus and they were not there to mess around. A lot of these kids were there to become professional tennis players. Their parents expected that out of them. The way they dressed, carried themselves. Um, uh, and even the women, very a lot of them would even be ball girls at all the top tennis tournaments all over the country or world for that matter. And it was really unbelievable to be around people that, that were that elite. And again, back to a trance, I seen these kids, so I had religious kids that were kind of really, kind of religious or not religious, whatever the case may be, but then I all of a sudden went into this other realm where these kids were going to be professional athletes and a lot of them ended up that way or they wanted a full ride for college or their parents just expected them to be amazing or this was just something their parents would send them to, to do to get in shape. Two weeks, a month, two months, a lot, live there. Nick Voluntary was the coolest thing I ever did. What, what I loved about that camp was one is it was an amazing condo they stuck us in. We had a pool, we had a jacuzzi. It was like a resort and it changed my life forever going and it was the first time I was independent doing and, and tennis was a blast, but it was really hard. I mean, I'm not kidding. We started at like seven in the morning. We played tennis till like six, seven at night. What was unbelievable though is afterwards they had like many clubs we'd go to and like, you know, you could dance. They had different things you could do. They would take you to the movies, take you to the mall. And it wasn't outside like Wisconsin, the religious camps. But again, really the, the women there, were, I, I really never seen beautiful women in that shape tan. And that was one thing that really made me say at 15 years old, I'm after I graduate high school, I'm going to Florida, California because of that. Then two weeks there, I almost fell into my own trance. And I had to really realize who am I in this mix, Right. Who am, am I? And I'm not, I'm not saying I was anti-religion. I was just kind of exhausted from it. But at the same time, truthfully, I played so much tennis that summer and playing sports my whole life. I figured out saying, hey, I don't want to be a professional athlete. Maybe I would have loved to do football or maybe boxing. I just wasn't good enough. I would have been in mixed martial arts. That would have been perfect because I was a lot better at wrestling, but I was great leg strength balance and I could box. But at that point, I'm like, I just wasn't growing at that point in time. And I was like one of the shorter kids there. A lot of these tennis player kids, even at my age, were six feet, six one, six two. And I was stronger than almost everybody at the tennis camp. They had a weightlifting thing. And I was, because they didn't lift weights like I did. They just played tennis all the time. And what was awesome too is we never had to wear a shirt. <laughs> we were all super tan, just wearing shorts. Even Nick Voluntary, who was like the coolest guy ever who ran it. It was his place. He's walking around no shirt and just shorts. I don't even know if they would allow that. But it was just like... Everybody was tan and then we would be going to the ocean and we'd be in the pool and it was like work real hard and play hard. It was almost like we were almost like low level professional athletes to a certain degree, but it changed my life. And again, back to a, a trance, I think in our lives, like a lot of people don't have certain, they don't have the opportunity that others have and Good or bad, I think a lot of us grow up. If I never had the opportunity to to you know go to my father's club or have the relationship that I had with my father, um, I, I would have never been able to do all those things and learn about a different side of the world. I guess. And when you're kind of I don't know, regardless if you're the best thing I always said that happened to me was my parents got a divorce. That sounds horrible at like five six years old, and back then nobody was divorced for the most part, I was able now to go with all my aunts and uncles to kind of spread myself out because it wasn't just my mom and dad. My mom um, started, you know, and I had a st eventually a stepfather. So she had a life with him a little bit. So I was able to go stay with all my cousins and all my different aunts and uncles. Some were very wealthy, some were middle class, some weren't, some were lower. I, it didn't matter. It was just all these different adventures and I would be able to go with my wealthy uh, aunts and uncles and go to South Florida and get that type of lifestyle going. They had condos, Fort Lauderdale, Boca, Pompano, right? That was amazing. I'd, I'd be going to high, I, I remember like all of a sudden my friends were like spring break was they'd be in Chicago and they're doing nothing. And then I'm jumping in a car or flying to South Florida. Before you know it, I'm at a highlight game with my, you know, I'm watching highlight in my 
you know, my dad's even, and he's giving me a highlight thing. And, and I'm like, wow, I went from like being in Cicero, which is not that good of an area at my grandparents last night. Now, all of a sudden, which that's not a dig to them, but all of a sudden now I'm in South Florida and now I'm on the intercoastal and my family members have boats. Like I call them the Italian Kennedys, my family, but Again, I got to see that, and then all of a sudden I had other family members doing many different things. I'm just using that for an example, like going to Chicago Bears games. My family members had front row seats to that. I would experience that, and going to all these different Italian restaurants. I'd be going for steak and lobster all the time, and I would be going to all these I remember like when the first uh, hibachi type place came out in Chicago, my father took me to that. He'd always take me to the lobster house. And then the next thing, you know, I'm with my mother. My mother couldn't afford to do those things. And we'd be going to my other favorite places, which could have been like Portillo's or, or Freddy's and all these things. But if I was on one side or the other, I wouldn't have experienced that. And I think a lot of us, back to the trance thing, is um, learning to break out of always doing the same damn thing or only seeing your perspective on things. Because I see a lot of people that are religious that see people party or drinking and they're always like, oh, they're lost souls. And then if you go to the party side and you're like, you know, the, you know, people that are, aren't partying or whatever, they're looking at them like, look, how boring is that? Or are they brainwashed? Or um, you know, whatever, kind of digging on them. Everybody's kind of digging on everyone else. But if you really never experienced it, it's almost like, I like the Amish. I like going to their restaurants and stuff. But those Amish, I don't know a ton about them, but I think at a certain age, they let their, uh, their children go on the outside world to experience. And if they come back, they're, I guess they commit. If they don't come back, then they're gone, which I think is a kind of a hard thing to do. Because if you back to being in a trance, if you've taught your kids all these things on how to live this way, and then all of a sudden you throw them into another world, you how would they adapt? And I, I think it's kind of a con job. And again, that doesn't mean that I'm against the Amish, but if the Amish really, you know, if they wanted to prepare, they don't want them to leave, let's call it for what it is, or you'd kind of balance it out because it's so extreme, the Amish, compared to a lot of the others. But again, they're in a trance where you don't know any better, right? And I think regardless if you're Amish, Italian, Jewish, whatever the case may be, you are kind of in a trance. You don't want to admit it. You're only really focused a lot of times on only what you know and what you don't want to learn or you're afraid to experience. And I talk about that, in a, like working out. I want to talk about a trance. I see people that I've worked out for many, many years and they kind of walk into a gym and I understand they have a routine, a rhythm and everything. They never experiment with a lot of different things. Even say a lot of my friends or family, everybody I know, they take up jogging. They never get away from it. Their knees are shot, their lower back. I'm like, try swimming. Try No, 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 no. It's almost like they, they're in that trance where they can't try different things. And when you're in a gym, I tell people constantly, try different gyms, try different equipment, try different exercises. Keep experimenting. But no, they're locked in their brain. And they can only do really what they know. And I don't know if they're afraid because they think if they break out of that, that they're they're going to get exposed for maybe not being as in shape or they're afraid of losing their identity. I don't know what it is. But please, you know, I'm not, just learn to break out. And I talk about this and experiment. And I'm not telling you if you're religious to go out and party and do drugs and drink. That's not what I'm saying. And if you're a party or a drinker to run over to religion, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is one is accept one another. Uh, and don't be fooled too. And regarding where you may end up in life, because I think a lot of people that make fun of other people or think that this is hokey or corny or whatever, a lot of times they end up swaying that way, right? And, and that can even be like, it blows me away. Like a lot of, th this kind of aggravates me though. I will say you have guys that kill people, then all of a sudden they're in religion, or they're in prison, now they're religious. Are, I'm not saying that's fake or real, but that's extreme. But I, I, it's almost, that's where I was trying to say the fine line sometimes is where they always need something. And and it has to almost be, in a not an obsession, but it's it's a life. They can't balance it out a little bit to say, hey, 
I'm kind of religious, but I also like to do this and I also like to do this and I'm also accepting of this and I'm accepting of that. It's almost extremes. And I think that's where the trance really takes over. Uh, at least that's what I'm, I'm calling it a trance. You don't have to call that. I just think it's um, just something that I've seen over the years, regardless if it's fitness, regardless if it's religion, regardless if it's an atheist, regardless what it is, just keep trying to learn different things is what I'm basically saying. And uh, don't think everything you're doing is always right for you because if you don't keep experimenting or trying different things, you'll really never know, right? I, I really believe that. Now, I, I have a problem with that with food. I really only like Italian food for the most part. And of course, I'll eat burgers or steak or different things, but I really almost am in a trance myself with food because I really don't like other foods. But here's the thing. I've traveled so much. I've tried a lot of different foods where I see a lot of people not doing that and not experimenting and not trying different things. I'm using food as an example, but I'm just saying in general. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Hopefully I didn't bore you to death on this one, but yeah. Um, if you get a chance, uh, you can check out my YouTube channel. It's just Rich Talenza. I talk about a lot of different things on there. Uh, I visit all different gyms all over North America. I show you my favorite uh, restaurants, Italian restaurants mainly. I did a, I do car shows. I was at one today with my father. I'm going to be posting one tomorrow. And um, hotels, different things I like to do. And then I'm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. If you get a chance, also I have a Mastering Self-Confidence program out where I try to help men find the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. So I have that as well. And obviously I have this podcast, but yeah, you, if you like the crazy shit I'm talking about here, you may like my mastering self-confidence program. Cause all I really want to do is help people kind of break out of a rut, I guess you could say, and open their mind. And it took me my whole life. I'm going on 50 to learn how to, I'm not saying I reprogram my brain because I still have issues like everyone else, <laughs> but it's kind of really learning to accept my behavior and understanding other people's behavior. And a lot of times just if people need help, kind of addressing that. Because I think a lot of us do want, a lot of us love to love people or want to be around people, right? And a lot of times the people we should be around, we're not. Because again, we're kind of stuck at a trance where we're afraid to meet either new people or try to you know, meet up with different groups, maybe try different religions, maybe think differently about different political things. Uh, I kind of do that with trying to help men really find who they really are, who they want to be, and live that life. Not always get caught up with who you are, but who you kind of want to be, right? That's really what it comes down to. All right, take care, and I wish you nothing but the best.